Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm Jenna for those of you that are new here and for today's video I wanted to share with you some tips to build and perfect your skincare routine. Um, some of these I learned through trial and error and some I learned uh, by watching dermatologists here on YouTube like uh, Dr. Dre, Dr. Lee, Dr. Shirin Idris um, or scientists like People Beauty and Cyril Laurent who are French. And these tips have genuinely helped me uh, build and perfect a skincare routine that is curated for me and my skin concerns. Because I know that it can be a bit daunting at times. There are so many products out there, there's so much contradicting info as well. So it can definitely be really hard sometimes to create a skincare routine for your skin. Uh, so I definitely hope that this video will help you out. And before we get started, I actually just filmed a tutorial on this look. Uh, I think it will already be out by the time you watch this video, so definitely go check it out. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So my tip number one is to target a specific issue or concern that you would like to address with your skincare routine. So like dryness, hyperpigmentation, aging, dull, flaky skin, etc. So it sounds very obvious when you say it like that, but if you are at all involved in the skincare community uh, on social media, it's very easy to fall into this uh, whole thing of, uh, oh, I need to try all of these uh, skincare products, all, the, all of these trendy products um, that everyone is using and everyone is raving about. Um, and it's not necessarily the best thing to do. If these uh, really like trendy and hyped up products target concerns that you don't have with your skin, there's no point really in using them. So really targeting concerns that you would like to address with your skincare routine will definitely help steer you in the right direction when it comes to what products or what ingredients you should be using. Now this leads me to my second tip, which is less is more. Using a lot of products in your skincare routine can actually be a little bit dangerous in the sense that it can actually increase the risk of irritation and overload your skin. The more products you use in your skincare routine, the higher the risk of one of them irritating your skin and certain ingredients can actually um, either cancel each other out or create bad reactions uh, in your skin. Like for example, if you use a chemical exfoliant and a retinol in the same routine. Now obviously some people have a very extensive skincare routine and have never experienced any issue um, and you know skincare is also fun and it's important to keep it that way to keep you consistent with it so if you have a 10 or 15 step skincare routine and it works for you then that's great. I'm just letting you know that the risk is there and uh, that it's also by no means necessary to reach your skin goals. Now I know it can be really tempting to use a lot of ingredients and a lot of products, especially when you have skincare concerns that you are trying to address and are struggling with it, but by constantly changing products and trying new things, you're not actually allowing the products that you're using to give you the results that they would, that they would give you had you used them for prolonged periods of time. Which brings me to my next point, which is consistency is key. Seeing results from your skincare routine can sometimes take a little bit of time depending on the issue that you are targeting. And so to increase the efficacy of the products that you are using, you need to give them time to do their thing. Try sticking to your products for several weeks at least and ideally several months uh, to see results, uh, especially with ingredients like retinoids. Uh, it can take uh, around six months up to a year, I think, sometimes to see results from your retinoids. So it's really important to stay consistent. Now, my tip number four is to never introduce several skincare products in your routine at once. That is because if one of them irritates your skin or gives you an, an allergic reaction, it will be very difficult to find the culprit if you recently introduced several products at the same time. So whenever you introduce a new product in your skincare routine, definitely wait a few days at least before introducing another one, uh, just in case irritation occurs. That will allow you to know which product is irritating your skin if that happens. Now tip number five, a way to make sure that your skin won't react badly to a product is to patch test first. That means putting the product on a small surface of your skin like your wrist or your cheek just in case it reacts. That way if the product is indeed irritating to your skin, you won't find out by irritating and damaging your whole skin barrier on your whole face. My tip number six is to avoid potentially irritating ingredients like fragrance, denatured alcohol, and essential oils in your skincare products. 
especially in products that are going to stay on your skin for an extensive amount of time like your serums or your moisturizer. Now, if you don't have sensitive skin, you may find that you are able to use products that contain some of these ingredients without issue. Um, the problem with these ingredients is that they have the potential to sensitize and irritate your skin over time, which is why I personally try and steer clear of them when I can. Now, obviously, if your favorite serum or moisturizer contains fragrance in it and you've never had any issue with it, you don't necessarily need to change it. It's just something to, you know, keep in mind, especially if you have sensitive skin. Now, I personally don't have sensitive skin, but I still try and steer clear of these ingredients, especially since there are a lot of great products out there that don't contain them. So I don't really see the point of risking it. So if you've tried any products uh, recently that you thought didn't work for you and that were maybe a bit irritating to your skin, try and see if they contained any of these ingredients um, and maybe uh, try similar products uh, that don't contain uh, fragrance, denatured alcohol and essential oils because they may have been the culprit. Tip number seven, skincare can be really expensive. So I personally try to pick and choose which categories I'm going to splurge in and which ones I'm not. For instance, I don't think that using a super expensive cleanser is necessary. Now, if you can afford it and enjoy uh, super expensive cleansers, obviously go for it. There's nothing wrong with it. But for me, my reasoning is that cleansers aren't going to stay on your skin for a long period of time, unlike your uh, serums or your moisturizer. So I personally don't really see the point of splurging in that category. I like to use CeraVe cleansers. They are very cheap and work great. Um, another category where I don't necessarily like to splurge is sunscreens, especially now that I have found uh, Asian sunscreens. There are so many products out there that are really affordable and really great. I personally love to use the Beauty of Joseon sunscreen. I buy it for around 12 euros on YesStyle and Stylevana. And there are just a ton of other great options on these sites that are just as affordable. Same goes for my moisturizer. I don't like to splurge on my moisturizer. I go through it very, very quickly because I have dry skin. So I love to just slather it on. So splurging on moisturizers just would not be very sustainable for me. I just want to use a moisturizer that works great for me and that won't break the bank every time I have to buy a new one. Now products where I like to splurge are my serums, uh, like my antioxidant or my retinol. I use the Ordinary Multi-Peptide uh, serum and the Paula's Choice Retinol Serum. Tip number eight. With strong actives like chemical exfoliants or retinoids, start slow. That goes for the frequency in which you are using your product throughout the week and also for the percentage of the product that you are using. You want to start slow and gradually increase the amount of times that you are using it throughout the week and the percentage of it to avoid irritation. For example, with my retinol, I started with the Polish Choice 0.3% uh, and I started using it once a week. I then gradually increased it two times a week, three times a week, uh, up until I was fine using it every night uh, without any irritation. Once that was the case, I increased to 1% retinol, but I made the horrible mistake of not decreasing the amount of times I was using it throughout the week and I completely destroyed my skin barrier. My skin was incredibly dry and irritated. It was so sensitive, so I completely stopped everything. I stopped using my retinol, my chemical exfoliants. I stopped everything and just completely focused on healing my skin and moisturizing it for weeks. And then once my skin was healed and was doing better, I slowly reintroduced retinol into my routine and I started at once a week. So trust me, it is much, much better for your skin and much more efficient to start slow and then to gradually increase your frequency of use rather than completely destroying and irritating your skin barrier and then having to wait for it to heal and then start over again. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> Now I know it can be hard sometimes, but it's really important with your skincare to be patient to see results. That means starting slow and building progressively. Now tip number nine, if you find that a product or a certain ingredient is irritating for your skin, try to cut back and completely stop using other actives for a while. That is particularly true with retinoids. Retinoids are very powerful ingredients that have amazing anti-aging and anti-acne properties, but they can also be very, very irritating for the skin. 
So in order to limit the risk of irritation when um, introducing retinoids in your skincare routine, definitely try and cut back on your other strong actives like your chemical exfoliants, especially since your retinoids uh, are going to provide you with a gentle exfoliation anyway. And once your skin is accustomed to retinoids, uh, then you can think of maybe reintroducing your other strong actives into your routine. But if you find your retinoids to be irritating on your skin, definitely try and completely cut back on your other strong actives. It will definitely help. I went to go and turn on my uh, lights behind me because as you can see, it's starting to get really dark outside, but my video is almost done. So I'm going to try and finish it quickly. Lastly, if you have specific concerns with your skin and are able to, I definitely suggest you going to see a dermatologist. Uh, however, I know it's not possible for everyone, especially, you know, for people uh, in the US. So my advice would be to definitely uh, listen to um, professionals like dermatologists and scientists here on YouTube and on social media in general uh, and really turn to them for advice. Now more than ever, there are so many resources out there, there are so many professionals uh, giving us advice and really edu educating us on these topics. That's personally what I did and I've learned so much over the past few years um, because I was just really interested and I had some skincare concerns of my own that I wanted to address. And I guess, you know, the difficult part is to kind of sort out all the information that you can find online about skincare. There's so much contradicting info out there, so that's why I personally turn to professionals to learn about skincare. So I will leave all of the channels that I have mentioned in my video uh, in the description box below uh, in case you are interested. Okay, so I think we are done. These are my 10 tips to build and perfect your skincare routine. These tips have definitely helped me out so much. Um, when I look back at like two years ago, I had pretty much no knowledge at all on uh, about skincare. And I just, you know, I, I had skincare concerns that I wanted to address. And so I was really interested. And I uh, went to dermatologists and professionals and they've helped me so much. And um, I feel like I'm at a pretty good point uh, right now with my skincare routine. I'm constantly also learning um, because I just love this topic so much. So yeah, I really hope that this video was um, in any way helpful for you. Uh, if it was, I would love it if you could consider subscribing and clicking on the thumbs up button below. Thank you so much for spending a part of your day with me. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!